Hey guys, how's it going? Hope everybody's doing well out there. Uh, for quite a while now, I've had several people ask me how to set up Jitsi Meet in Docker, and uh, I was making it way more complicated than it needed to be. So in this video, I wanna show you how to set up Jitsi in Docker using Nginx Proxy Manager to make it available to the internet. Okay, so here we are on my desktop, and you can see that I've got uh, Windows PowerShell open because obviously we're gonna do some stuff in SSH. In fact, all of this is going to be done in SSH. Um, also, we've got some tabs open. We've actually got uh, the Jitsi Meet handbook on how we're gonna deploy this on Docker. Uh, it's actually fairly simple to follow along, but uh, there are some steps that they don't really go into a lot of detail here on. So I will be going into a little bit more depth. Uh, of course, over here, we've got um, the, uh, the files that it talks about that we're gonna need to download from right here. I've got that tab open right there as well. <clears throat> I've also got Cloudflare open because we know uh, if you followed this channel for any time at all, you know that I love to use Cloudflare to manage my DNS and uh, handle uh, certificates and uh, DDoS protection and all of the stuff that comes with even a free Cloudflare account. I love Cloudflare, I've been using it forever. So we're gonna use that for what we're doing here. And then of course, I've also got Nginx Proxy Manager up and running uh, so that we can uh, get a domain name attached to our Jitsi server. So let's jump back over to here and let's just kind of talk about what this says. Uh, the first step here is download and extract the latest release. Do not clone the, the, the repository. Uh, that's, that's something that they're right there in the instructions. Don't clone it. Uh, so let's, let's actually just kind of jump in here and uh, let's jump over to here. Let me make sure I've got the right <clears throat> IP address up in front of me here, I do. So what I'm gonna do is uh, SSH my username at the IP address of the server. Okay, so there we are, now we're logged in. Uh, let's make sure that we've got Docker and everything uh, set up and ready to go. So we'll do uh, sudo uh, docker ps. Okay, Docker's up and running, that's good. That means we can actually go ahead and move forward. So I'll go ahead and do a clear. Like so. Now the first thing that we want to do, like it says, we actually want to download uh, the uh, the files rather than we want to download. Uh, I'm going to download this tar.gz file here <clears throat> uh, rather than cloning the repository like we have done in the past. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to do a sudo wget, which is just telling it, hey, go get this file, uh, and then this is the link uh, that if I right click and uh, do a copy link address. Uh, that's what I get right here. <clears throat> now, uh, this may have changed uh, depending on when you're watching this. Uh, this is uh, June 23rd, so this is the current stable release. These numbers may change, so keep that in mind as we're moving forward in time if you're watching this at a later date. So I'll just go ahead and hit enter here. So now it's gone ahead and downloaded that file. So now we're good to go. The next thing we need to do is actually extract uh, that tar.gz file. So we're gonna do tar-zxvf uh, to extract everything uh, with the permissions it needs and whatnot. Again, this stable release number may change depending on when you're watching this. So I'll go ahead and enter and there we go. And of course, the next thing we wanna do is actually do a CD uh, into that Docker folder that it's created there. Uh, so there we are, now we're in there. And if we take a look, the next uh, step that it's got, so we, we, it didn't, it didn't uh, give us any instructions on any of that. So uh, the next thing we're gonna do is copy uh, the env.example to be a .env file. Uh, so we'll go ahead and do that next. Uh, so go ahead and paste that in. And then what we're gonna do is actually do a sudo nano.env and so now it's gonna ask for a bunch of passwords here and, and I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, but I'm kind of not, I'm doing things a little differently here. But uh, what I wanna do is actually scroll down. Uh, we're gonna run a script to fill in all of these different auth passwords and the recorder passwords and all of that. Uh, what we actually wanna do is come down to uh, down to where it says uh, basic configuration options. Our HTTP port will be 8,000. You can change that if you need to. Um, uh, I'm gonna leave it on 8,000. This is a brand new install uh, of Ubuntu server with Docker installed. Uh, so I'm gonna leave that on port 8,000. Our uh, exposed port for HTTPS will be 8443. Time zone, oops, I'm gonna change that to be uh, America slash Denver. <clears throat> oops, we'll keep scrolling down now. This will be the public URL for your setup. Uh, the, the URL that you'll send to people to have them join your server. So uh, meet.example.com does not work for me. So I'm gonna do meet.dnb. Uh, actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do jitsi. .dnb .wtf. Uh, if you want your own WTF domain name, uh, Porkmon has those. Uh, if you wanna go check that out. Uh, they're not sponsoring this. I just love Porkmon. 
Um, so next, we're going to go down here to the Docker host address. Uh, this will be uh, uh, 1.6.3, so 192.168.1.163. That's the server I'm logged in at the moment. Uh, so that's the server address or the host address I'm going to put there. Now, the rest of this stuff, um, where it says like enable lobby, you can turn that on. Uh, you can enable the, the pre-join page if you want to do that. Um, you can enable the welcome page if you want to do that. Just uncomment uh, any of these that you want to enable or disable. Uh, enable the close page. I'm not going to do that. Um, enable audio or disable uh, audio levels. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, leave audio levels uh, alone so that they're enabled. We're going to enable uh, noisy mic detection. Uh, if you've got that jerk that's always got his headphone or his mic on for no reason and lots of noise, uh, this should I'll let you know who that is. Now, down below that, we've got uh, some Let's Encrypt information. Now, because I'm going to be running this on um, uh, Nginx Proxy Manager and Cloudflare, I'm going to let Nginx Proxy Manager and Cloudflare handle my Let's Encrypt certificates. So I'm not going to actually enable any of this Let's Encrypt stuff. Uh, however, if you wanted to do that, uh, all you have to do is just come in here, uncomment these lines, change the domain name, uh, you know, give it your email address there. Uh, I would actually say use staging. Uh, I, I ran this once uh, with staging mode turned off and Let's Encrypt immediately blocked me from doing anything else on it for a day. So I would definitely use staging if you're gonna do that. <clears throat> if you want to enable Etherpad, uh, you can go ahead and do all of that um, by, by entering the, the stuff that you need to for each of these different things. Um, the Jagasi configuration, if you want to do enable that uh, for SIP or, or voice over IP, I believe, is what that's actually going to be for. You can scroll down. Uh, do you, how do you want to enable authentication? Um, do you want that on or off? Do you want enabling guests? Yes or no. <clears throat> off type, you can change that. Um, so there's lots of stuff in here that we're that, that are available. Even LDAP for authentication, if you were on a on a server that had or, or, or a network with LDAP, uh, you could do that as well. Uh, there's lots of stuff in here. In fact, there's too much to go over in this. We're just going to do a very basic setup. So, um, so once we've got all of uh, the stuff that we need, if we scroll all the way back up to the top here, uh, for you know the stuff that we want to enable, our Docker host address, our public URL. Once we've got all of this stuff configured the way we want, we can do Control O uh, to bring this up and click Enter to save, and then Control X to bring us back to here. Now, the next thing we want to do is we actually want to generate those, all those passwords uh, that we saw a moment ago uh, that were all of the auth passwords that were blank. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to run a script. In fact, if we do an LS, oops, if we, if we come up to here and we do an LS, uh, right here, you can see this gen-passwords.sh. Uh, that's actually the script that we're going to run um, like so. We'll just hit that. And then what we can do, if we actually come back up here, uh, now you can see that all of those uh, passwords have been put into place. Of course, uh, I don't care if you see these, this server won't be up for very long. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, X out of that. And then uh, the next thing we need to do is, need to do is actually create uh, some configuration folders. And it's a simple command. Uh, so it's gonna be make directory, and then here's all of the different directories that it's going to make uh, for our setup. So we'll go ahead and just click enter there. And then really the last thing that we need to do uh, is is just come over here and do uh, sudo docker compose up minus D and hit enter. And now it's gonna go ahead and pull all of the stuff that it needs to pull. It'll extract and set all these Docker containers up for us. And once that's done, we'll go ahead and come back uh, and we'll get the next steps going so that we can connect remotely. Okay, so all of that has been uh, deployed. Uh, so let's do a, a sudo docker uh, ps and just make sure that everything is up and running the way we would expect it to. Let's actually make this bigger. Uh, like so, I just run that again. So everything looks like it's up and running. So uh, let's do the, one, one quick thing here. Let's do uh, 192.168, uh, let's do 8443. Okay, so plain text. So because we don't have uh, our Let's Encrypt stuff on here, that 8443 port isn't going to work. So we can do port 8000, like so. And here we are. Uh, so then at this point, we can actually just click on start meeting. And this is fine. This is, this is one of those weird things. Um, that I ran into before. This is what I was beating my head against before. So uh, let's take the next step and actually get our uh, our domain name set up on both Cloudflare and then Nginx Proxy Manager. So what I'm going to do is come over to here. I've already got my my root domain pointed to my public IP address. Of course, I've got that blocked out so you can't see it. But what I want to do next is actually click uh, add a record. I'm going to go down to CNAME 
And I'm gonna do a Jitsi and then at, and then I'm gonna make sure that this is DNS only for the moment. So we just wanna set this up uh, to do what it needs to do just to get the domain name pointed to us. So I'll go ahead and click on save. And then uh, what I can do is then come over here to Nginx proxy manager. Um, let's go over and add a proxy host. So we're gonna say uh, jit, oops, jitc dot uh, dnb dot wtf. We'll hit enter. Our scheme, uh, if we had used the Let's Encrypt stuff uh, on the server, we would change this to HTTPS. Because we didn't, we're just gonna leave this on HTTP. And then we'll do 192.168.1.163 on port 8000. We wanna block common exploits. And this time we actually wanna enable WebSocket support. Then we'll come over here to SSL and we'll request a new SSL. Go ahead and do that and click on save. Okay, so now we've got this. It looks like it's up and running. So let's go ahead and just click our link. There we go. Let's see if we can get connected. So we're going to go ahead and allow this. Um, okay, let's do uh, let's do this and we'll click on join. And this is throwing an error because I'm recording up here. So uh, let me kill this camera and then we'll come back over and take a look at our uh, setup here. Okay, so here we are, we're back on my desktop. I'm connected to Jitsi Meet, uh, and you'll notice that it's actually up and running. Uh, it's not throwing any errors, it's not disconnecting. And that was because of a web socket issue that I was having before. So uh, now that this is up and running, what I wanna do next is grab my phone and actually connect uh, to this as well. Okay, so there is one thing that if you wanna connect on your, uh, on your phone here, uh, there's a setting uh, right down here where you're gonna have to enter your server URL. And I missed that before. And there we go. So uh, now we've got uh, this up and going uh, on my desktop. If I want to, I can I can come up to here uh, and actually just do this. And now I've got uh, my phone, which is uh, obviously right here. Uh, now you can see uh, my little setup right there. And there's an infinite number of me and you or something going on there just to show that everything is working. Okay, guys, there you go. There's a very basic uh, Jitsi install using Docker. Of course, there's a ton of different things that you can add on to this. And I'll have uh, a link in the description with all of the resources you'll need to add all of those different things to your setup. But I really wanted to get this video out so that you could see that setting up Jitsi doesn't have to be difficult. Now, the one thing I do want to mention here is that I am using Nginx Proxy Manager with WebSockets enabled. So if you wanted to use this with traffic or or one uh, any of the other reverse proxies that are out there, you may want to make sure that you can enable web sockets in order to make this work correctly. Uh, it wasn't until I realized that web sockets uh, were, were kind of necessary for this that I realized uh, that that's what I needed to do. So uh, once I got web sockets figured out and enabled in Nginx Proxy Manager, everything started working without issue. So if you run into issues using uh, another reverse proxy, uh, try enabling web sockets to see if that fixes the problems that you're having there. So like I said, all of this will be available in the description down below. Uh, there will also be some links down there if you wanna support the channel, uh, either through channel memberships or Patreon or something like that, those links will be down there as well, but you don't have to do that. That's just an option if you feel uh, the desire to do that. Um, so definitely let me know in the comment section if this is something that you would use in your own home network. I really think this is something that I'll set up and keep set up, of course, on a different URL, uh, ju just so I've got it available anytime I happen to need it. So. I think uh, with all of that being said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. But I guess before I do that, I really do want to give a big shout out to my channel members and my patrons. You guys are amazing. I really do appreciate your support month after month. Whether you've been here one month or multiple months, you only joined for one month and did what you wanted to do. That's great. I really do appreciate the support. It really does mean a lot to me. So thank you guys so much for that. But I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. So as always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support. And I'll talk to you in the next video.